those mushrooms kicking in for you? Yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like in the last <laughs> movie idea. Oh, man. Yeah. That's so good for the brain. It's so good. It is. What yeah. are we doing? I we should just know. write stories. Yeah. We are writing stories. We're writing short stories. Yeah. That's going to be the new podcast. Yeah. You know why? Because nobody cares. Like, what people want is to be entertained. They want something totally different. Totally different. Yeah. I think we've just figured out what Sages the Metaverse is going to do. You have to get outrageous. Oh, for sure. Which we're good at. Welcome to Saviors of the Metaverse, the podcast that saves and definitely entertains. You're listening to the show on a related yet unrelated podcast. To get all the episodes of Saviors and to become a Saviors super fan, search for Saviors of the Metaverse on your podcast player of choice. Once there, I don't know, subscribe. And while you're at it, give it a rating because, well, Jared needs confirmation. Jared needs affirmation. Jared needs Savior Nation. And if nothing else, thank you for listening to Saviors of the Metaverse. We'll see you in there. So you're talking about gluten-free in Costco? Yeah, you think they have gluten-free foods there? I assume they do because it's Costco. <laughs> okay. And did you know that Costco yeah. is actually that their in-house brand is Kirkland? And ironically, yeah. Kirkland. <laughs> Should I try this again? No, I think you were good the first time. I think I was good the first time? Yes, one take guy. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I heard in the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I do. Okay, so the guy had an idea. So he calls up a local recording studio Mm -hmm. and says, I need to come in now. I have an idea. Please, oh, it's that night. He's going to record a song. Yeah. One take. Change the world. Damn, son. Cool. That is cool. Yeah. So my question for you is, how do we do that? I heard that on TikTok, so that's real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did, actually. This is great. (laughs) My nephew, when I saw him over Christmas... I can't remember what we were talking about. Some global event that was going on. And he was saying something. I was like, oh, yeah. I said, well, actually, here's the thing, you know, something I knew a little bit about, you know. I wasn't arrogant about it like Neil deGrasse Tyson would have been, which would have been, shut up, kid. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just going to go hard at Neil every time I can. Yeah. Not Neil the human, but Neil the character. Yeah. Let's be honest. The NPC. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's like like a third level boss, you know, that you got to defeat. That's what I'd say. Okay. I think we should create a video game about this. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that in another episode. Yeah. But uh, my nephew, this is great. He's in eighth grade. I was asking where he got some of his information. So I was like, yeah, that, you know, that sounds about right. I said, but did you also know this, this, and this? And he goes, yeah, well, he's like, you know, I saw those things. And uh, he said, but this is what's actually happening. He goes, and I know, and I know that's true because I saw it on TikTok. Yeah, he yeah. literally said that. Yeah, and he awesome. didn't say it sarcastically. He's nah. a funny kid. Yeah, that's good. And I thought that's really interesting because you hear pundits and people, you know, old farts like us, mostly like you, not yeah, like me, I'm geez. not that old. Okay. I'm, I'm only like two years younger than you. Yeah. You look like you're five years younger than me, though. There you go. There you go. I like that's that. even biological age. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Let's get that tested. Real age. Yeah. But you hear people talk about this all the time, like, hey, oh, it must be true because I saw it on TikTok. And I was like, you know, I've never heard anybody actually say that. Now I have. Yeah. It's an eighth grade boy. I have my nephew. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. So someone says, because I've heard that before too, yeah. right? Where you hear stuff, where would it be true? That's a great point. I mean, you should question everything. I don't think you should be cynical and be like, it's all fake. Uh, it's for all sure. Fake. Yeah, I agree with that. Critical thinking, right? Yeah. Back to what we talked about in the last episode about storytelling. You know, be a good storyteller so that you can identify, you know, when you are being told a story, which mm-hmm. is 99% of the time, right? And everything. Yeah. And then you just are, are clear on, you know, hey, there's the agenda here. This is the agenda there, which again, is not a bad thing. Just know what the agendas are. Yeah. So that you're not being sucked yeah. into believing something that's not true. Yeah, I agree. You don't want to be cynical on everything. I was thinking about right. this. Here's one thing I was thinking about. And it's different for this show because I think we have to do it. But have an opinion on everything. So you think about like minimalism. Sure. You know, minimalism with your clothes in your closet and your stuff in your car and your desk and whatever. All yeah. your items that you have. Minimal, yeah. It can also be your files in the cloud, right? Correct. It can also be just like... All the thoughts that you have, yeah. all the opinions, like this microphone sucks, bro. And like you have to have an opinion on the microphone, or you have to have an like opinion that. on the room, or you have to have an yeah. opinion about the sports team, or or about Kirkland's, or like they don't have gluten free food. Like, and it could be basic stuff too, right? It could be things that you're actually interested in. Now, sure. for our show, I think we're going down a list of topics and we're sharing, yeah. I'm not saying opinions, but thoughts 
Yeah, thoughts. So it's more in a fun exercise that if it's done in the right way, I think that makes a lot of sense. But I right. think it could be exhausting to say, maybe I want to have less opinions about things. And I think that would free up some space. Yeah, I think that starts by first recognizing you don't know everything you think you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, like I said, a million times for me personally. You know, when I realized how much I didn't know, never would know, and what a massive advantage that is. That yeah. was a real... That's your promo. It's my promo. Right, yeah. 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 So if Kirkland's to... wants to sponsor my... Yeah. Yeah, so that's the way I look at it, man, is, you know, is just realizing, you know, it's the, the idea of staying curious about everything. Yeah. Realizing, I mean, it, things that were so matter-of-fact on. I mean, people were being killed. Oh, I'm going to fuck this up, I'm sure, historically. But back when the whole, the idea that the Earth was the center of the universe, people were being killed for speaking out against that. Scientists, people, you know, yeah. astronomers were saying, actually, oh, yeah. that's not true. It's like, oh, actually, we're going to burn you at the stake. <laughs> yeah, jeez. I mean, you go against the dominant narrative or ideology, the dominant story, you know, that could have serious consequences. Yeah. God, that's terrible. Like, think about the lineage that was destroyed because that fucking poor guy got hung. Yeah. It, that sucks. They were trying to do that to, uh, who was it? It wasn't Galileo, was it? Well, like Socrates was murdered. Yeah, was yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They just said, no, dude, you're too outrageous for us. Is that how it happened? I don't know. I don't know about the life and death of Socrates. I know he was a great philosopher. Yeah, we didn't know his stuff because he didn't write it down. He was just speaking. So it was his boys. Moral tradition, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of people like to knock that. Yeah. But it actually has a lot of weight. It became the, the student. What are they called? The person that becomes... What is I don't know. Um, what? The yeah, student? Spirit what, fingers. What you <laughs> the student. Spirit fingers. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Jazz hands. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It Which becomes like the teacher. Oh, yeah. And the student, the student becomes, becomes the one. Aristotle. Kung Fu. Plato. That's Kung Fu. Great names. I don't know. Yeah. Nikki Haley. <laughs> She's on my mind. Do you know why? She's running for something. She's she running for something. She gives us a message to Nikki, wherever Nikki is right now. She was in New Hampshire probably Do recently. Do you want to go hard at her like I did? I like don't. Grass Tyson? No, 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 I don't. Okay. I don't. Because well, I, I don't care. Yeah. But I have a message. But where is she going to be next? What's in Michigan? South Carolina, I think. Really? Isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Could be. She should win that one. She loses that one. She you will. need to stop. You need to She'll opt out. She'll lose that one. Yeah. All so. Right. Yeah. She lives in Key Island. You know that? Does she has she? a house there. Yeah. I'm not surprised. So here's the deal. She's got to stop fucking texting me. Is she texting she you? She texted me like a lot to a point where, you know, when you watch television and let's yeah. like, say Samsung and then you go on social media, Samsung's gone at wherever you go. You're like, you oh, know yeah. what? fuck it. I'm not buying Samsung ever again because these fuckers won't stay out of my feed and they're just sending. And I didn't ask for this. Right. Very interruption marketing. Now, if you start texting me though, and I didn't ask for a text Boom. and it's not a friend or it's not someone that would, oh man, Jared's texting me. Yeah. That's a friend. I know. I like that. Right. Nikki every day with links and this and you got to do this and you got to do that. I'm like, how did you get my number? I know they just run lists or whatever. Yeah. Then you spam it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop them. No, they come in from another numbers. angle. Yep. New number. New yep. this, new that. And they think that's going to work and it actually has a negative effect. Oh, of course it does. It's really annoying. It's like the emails I get and I probably have one sitting in my inbox right now. Let's talk about this. But email is annoying. Yes. Text is very personal. It is. Because I would get those from uh, Joe Biden. Ooh. How did he get your... I don't know. Right? Like how did they buy, name? they buy. Oh, how did he get my number? You're a registered Democrat? I don't know, man. I'm a registered independent. Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to register for that. Or you do have to register, I guess. Yeah. You got to claim. But don't like, you want to? Okay. Don't you think it would be good? And I'm not saying go vote or like, ah, yeah, you should vote. You should vote. Whatever. Uh -huh. You can't vote in the primary, though. Yes, you can. How? In North Carolina, you can. How? You can pick a side? Yeah, you can vote. So some states, you have to register as that party oh, cool. to vote in the primary. Okay. But in others, oh, I, didn't know I don't that. believe North Carolina is. I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's see here. Can I vote? Yeah. In the you can write in the founder of like punch on. Yeah. Can I vote in the Republican mm. primary? Listen to music while he's doing this. If like I'm doo -doo -doo. not Republican, Jeopardy song, Julian, hit it. Okay, so here's Orange County, North Carolina. Where's that? That's uh, Chapel Hill, I believe. They call it Orange County. Orange yeah. County. Yeah. It's kind of like California. It's like so you okay i am registered unaffiliated may mm -hmm. i vote in a primary election you may register with any political party recognized in the state of north carolina party affiliation in terms of primary in which a voter is eligible you yeah, must register as unaffiliated now if you do not declare a party on your registration application you will be registered as unaffiliated during a partisan primary election an unaffiliated voter may vote a party ballot only if the party oh. authorizes unaffiliated voters to vote in their primary 
Unaffiliated voters may choose to participate in one party's primary, Democratic, Libertarian, Republican. Unaffiliated voters aged 18 plus within the Orange County School District may choose to vote the nonpartisan ballot. Yeah, so that's just talking, yeah, it's just Orange County, but then that's all across the state, I'm sure. So what does that even mean? That means that you and I can both go vote in the Republican and Democratic primaries, and we don't have to be registered either. I mean, whatever you just said made no sense. Whatever so I just read. I just read Chap GPT. I'm going to summarize this Oh, yeah, what Chap GPT say? Because that's accurate all the time. Open primary. Yeah, exactly. Open primaries. That's what's called. Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Texas, Vermont, Virginia. Semi-open primaries. These states allow unaffiliated voters to participate. But if you're registered with a party, you may only vote in that party's primary. Correct. Arkansas, Georgia, Michigan. This state's like Arkansas, Georgia, Michigan, New Hampshire, North Carolina, South Carolina, Wisconsin. Yep. Mixed. States like Ohio have a mixed system where the process can vary depending on the level of the election, state, local, federal, and all this kind of sure. shit. So, yeah, unaffiliated is considered being registered. I didn't know that. Yeah, in North right. Carolina. So I'm wrong. So look at that. Look at that, man. And, you and know, I'm okay with that. You should be. I'm fine with it. Because you're a curious guy. Thank you. You realize how much you don't know, yeah. how much you never will know. Yeah. And what a massive advantage that is to you. Oof. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm a part of the you're team. crushing it today. Yeah. You're crushing it in 2024. I think that should be a t-shirt. The statements on the front and then all those words that you just said that yep. go on the back. Yeah. So I'm saying, wait, turn around. I want to read that. It's like a word cloud. Yeah. So it's like, doesn't even make sense. Yeah. And it's just like those things are high. You can walk around with the word cloud over your head. Ooh. We said that's a metaverse shit. That's some augmented See, reality. There we go. That's some Mark Zuckerberg metaverse next mm-hmm. level. Here's how it integrates. Well, it's kind of like the original Facebook where, like, what was the question it always asked? I am. And then it would just like, you would have a statement about like, I am doing a podcast with Jared right now. Oh, well, remember yeah, that? I kind of do remember yeah, like that. It from gave way, you a prompt. Back, way back. Yeah. yeah. That was in, I don't know, seven or some shit. What was that original question that they said? I don't remember. But you know yeah. what? This is great. You got an iPad. Yeah. I got an, I got an iPad. iPad. We can, we iPad can together. research. We can fact check ourselves right now. Yeah. Yeah. What was the original Facebook question prompt? Is that what it be? I don't know if that's the, what's on your mind? Uh... Yeah, your status, Facebook prompts. It's like if this podcast just turns into us typing. <laughs> yeah, so people feel just, like <laughs> that should be the intro. The on YouTube though. You know, if you want a study partner, oh, yeah? so you can pull up YouTube uh-huh. and you get a study partner, and it could be hold on, cartoonish. What's that thing? Anime style. It could be a real person. So it'd be someone at a desk, yeah, working. Rain window, cup of coffee. They take breaks. They do work. Like seriously, yeah. and you can put it on for like hours. And it's like, that's you feel wild. like you're studying with somebody. Man, that's like a sad and buddy. awesome all at the same time. Yeah. And yeah, what's on your mind? That was the original one. So anyway, mm. yeah, that's cool. So Nikki Haley. Yes. Because they, they're running ads on social media. Probably works though. Because if we're talking about NPCs. And if you're like a Nikki Haley supporter, I suppose. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you get these things like, hey, sign this petition. Joe Biden needs you. You know, I'm like, Joe yeah. Biden doesn't need me. I don't need him. I don't want to go too far down this path, but we do realize, the American public realizes, unless something drastic happens, it's going to be the same two guys running what? again. What? A depressing thought. Right? Seriously. Am I right? You're right, yeah. Or does Nikki have a chance? Do you think she's got an outside chance? No, not even No close. one else does. No. She's like hanging in. She's hang- She's the only one. Well, she's got a lot of financial support of the never Trumpers, you know? Yeah. I, what a mess, man. I mean. And the Dems don't want to change anything, so because Biden's the only one that could probably beat Trump. Right now, they don't have anyone else who's elevated themselves. Oh, yeah, they do. Who? Gavin Newsom. He's not running, though. Could he enter? Does he still have time? Oh, yeah. That would be crazy. California running this country? Wow. Oh, yeah. No way. That's terrifying. He's a smart dude. I mean, Trump would win. He would, you think, no. No, I think, no, I don't. You think Gavin Newsom? Well, I don't know. When's the latest someone would have to enter to really have a chance? Like, not that. Let's look it up. Yeah. Let's look it up. This is great. That is a good one. You know, because I like to speculate just off the top. Like, who's the latest to enter the race to still pull that you shit know. off? Okay. Yeah, why don't you ask ChatGPT? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. That's a better idea. Who is, oh, geez. They're going to be like, you are asking all sorts of questions. No, actually, right online with politics. Who is the latest? They make no idea what I just said there. Correct. Oh, doing research with Bing. Oh, God. Bing's got that uh, built-in AI. They all have that AI said now. It was their... You know, then Bing was like, but my real name is this. They can't figure like, it the out. The developers can't find out uh, yeah, that I'm aware. Like, yeah. What yeah. month would it? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Figure it out. Here, interest. So is the audience. Grover Cleveland, though? Groves. He's, I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's got a great like last him. name. He was considered a pretty shitty president, right? 
You know, that could just be a story. What if he was amazing? He could have been. Right? Someone liked him. Yeah. And they voted for him. But he was the only president to be in office, to be out of office, and to be back in office. Mm -hmm. A lot of people tried. They didn't win. So that would be a Trump guy. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Cleveland Golf Course, Buffalo, New York. Boom. Yeah, man. It's pretty sad. Yeah. 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 So McKinley was assassinated in Buffalo. In Buffalo? Yeah. I think so. I'm going to ask here. When was Grover Cleveland assassinated? Yeah. See, that's like a wild assumption, right? Like, yeah. When was... No, he died in his home, I believe. By assassination? No. Who died by assassination? Yeah, I just told you, McKinley. Let's see. Who killed Grover Cleveland? This is who killed Grover. <laughs> this is so it. good. And I'm going to use this example. When killed Grover Cleveland? Yeah. I told you. September 6, 1901. Who's that? McKinley? Yeah. So... Grover Cleveland died. Not that crazy. But he's dead. It's you ain't gangrene. My life, bro. Grover Cleveland did? No, McKinley. Oh. After, because that was a Pan American Games. Oh. Buffalo was a big deal. This is like Buffalo Cleveland stuff right here. Like, mm. even when Buffalo gets something good, they get the Pan American Games. Like, big deal. Kind of like the Olympics, but kind of not and didn't really work out. Man. And the president comes, is like, big to do. Let's go to Buffalo. Fucking someone shoots him. It's fucked up. Bad shit. Let's see here. Who do you think killed JFK? I think it was suicide. I think JFK killed himself. Okay, so I've heard a lot of stuff about him. Like, he was in a ton of pain. Oh, so he really? has to be killed. Like the movie Fletch. Ooh. Remember that movie? Man, yeah. That's yeah. going old school. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, I'm still... You're still searching. I am still... Like, where is this guy's death? Whose? Grover Cleveland. He died in his home. I already told you. By whose hand? <laughs> A heart attack in 1908. Allegedly. Oh my God. I'm just saying. You know what's crazy? McKinley dies in 1901. Yep. Cleveland dies in 1908. I don't know. Why is that crazy? I don't know. Seven years difference? Just, yeah. (laughs) It's a long time ago. It's called life, bro. Gangrene. They couldn't keep the president alive. Yeah. That's things were rough back then. So anybody who wants the good old days needs to remember that. A thousand percent. Pre antibiotics. Fuck. Pre, like, you know. Sewage and sanitation. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Who's it? Dave Chappelle has the whole thing. Like, once you get diarrhea at that age, you're a goner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Parasites fucking eat away. You're done. Well, you die dehydration. Fuck. Just that simple. It was to be so much better. You know what's funny, too, is they talk about how Joe and Donald, they all argue with each other and yell and Trump. So, and then you read some of the old shit, like Thomas Jefferson and the shit they used to say. Holy fuck. They were ruthless, too. Big time. Yeah. I guess it wasn't as amplified as it is today because the news took forever to yeah. reach fucking horse and buggy. filtered. Fuck, you couldn't even like, to read at night, like you'd have to have like Lots of candles. lantern, candles. People say they would, you couldn't leave to go outside for a walk because you would get fucking just handled by the thugs or whatever. Yeah. You'd have to go with somebody. Yeah. So they would just fucking steal your shit, your robe. Yep. Yeah. Fuck, you get cut. It's probably all the... The Irish. I would not. They were. Not. I would not. <laughs> oh, no. All those Irish came God. over. They were just ruined. We have it good. <laughs> yeah. We have it good. I can say things like that now. Yeah, I've I discovered guess. I'm only 4% so. Irish, 49% Scottish, so I can get racist with it. It's against mm. the Irish. Yeah. But to all of our Irish yeah. listeners, it's nothing personal. Mm. It's just my low self-esteem and need for identity. Yeah. So I try all to right. put others down. I get it. That's how it works. Yeah. It's all right. I feel you. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry to, to no. derail us there. You're good. We do have a good, though. We do. Yeah, you were saying, carry on. No, I'm just like, when you have perspective, mm-hmm. you think about World War II wasn't that long ago. It nope. was a rough time. It was a very rough yeah. time. Early 1900s, rough time. You think back to the like the kings and the queens Dude, World, in the 17th. 17- World War I was, it, you know, it gets glossed over a lot just in yeah. general memory because World War II had such significance. What, 15 years ago or some shit? World War I was unbelievable man i mean just the more people died we can look this up Mm. more people died of disease and infection i believe let me i don't know if the ipad suits you during the show because i like when you just you like like, bullshit when i just talk off the top of my head about yeah you're trying to fact check yourself again you're searching something up yeah it might not even be factual i can create a website right now rank it number one on google and give you all fake stats and you would never know that's true World War I claimed an estimated 16 million lives. Mm-hmm. The influenza epidemic that swept the world in 1918 killed an estimated 50 million people. Was okay. it the Spanish flu? Yes. 
one fifth of the world's population was attacked. That's okay, blah, blah, blah. This is about the influenza. They're just comparing that. How many people died from infection in World War I? It's good to know. And it's good for the audience to know, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing the way it for you. you. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for me. Yeah. Because I know this answer. I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. I don't know. Anyway, look yeah. it up. <laughs> look it up. Find out if yeah. I'm true or not. You know, you're right. I don't know if this suits me. I think it's better to have the audience fact check me, create yeah. some controversy, a little mm -hmm. bit of conflict mm -hmm. in the comment section. And then eventually I go, you know what? You're right. Thank yeah. you for fact checking that. Yeah. But we've already got all this engagement. Uh, Numbers go up. Yeah. Sponsors come in. Kirkland doubles down. Yeah. Yeah, space-time continuum, and people don't agree with our thoughts on it because Ooh. they have the facts on what the space-time can, like anyone fucking actually knows. Now, man, you just took it to the whole yeah, other level, right? You know, All we these from, things. Yeah, I yeah, like that. Yeah, if like people could say something like you said something about the vaccine, and someone would be like, "No, this is how the vaccine works." Yeah. And you don't know what you're talking about, and we get arguments and no, no, we let, we, let the, we let the audience argue. Yeah, they just yeah. they just kind of poke and prod mm. like a couple of bots. Yeah, poking and prodding. Mm -hmm. Not Getting like the it. fight started in the comment section yeah. for our engagement yep. and for our sponsors to double down yeah. on their sponsorship. Yeah. See that right they there? They can go for it. Yeah. So we could have, who's at betterhealth.org? They had a whole scandal, but they were by far, I think it was 2021 ish, number one podcast sponsor by like. Better Health or Better Help, the mental. The, is it Better Help? What I said? That's better, better Help. Better Help. The yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better Help. Yeah, they had big time scandals. I don't know. Look it up. That's the thing, though. You can look it up. Like, we can talk about it. What kind of scandals? I don't know. Sex tapes? What? I'm just kidding. No. I just thought I'd throw that out because that's usually the scandals that happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they had scandals. Anyway, they spent so much money on advertising. They did. So we have, we've talked supplements in the last episode. AG1's like real quick. Yep. They sponsor it. Kirkland's or Costco. Sponsors us. Have your pick. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they sponsor it. And then we'd be a better help to fix all of the stress that we're causing people. Right. Yeah. Misuse of health information. That's a tough one. That's what Ooh, so the FTC claimed violations. that better help pushed consumers to hand over sensitive health information through mm. an intake questionnaire, mm. which they promised to keep private. However, better help allegedly shared this information with major advertising platforms include, oh my God, Facebook, Snapchat, Critio. The fuck's that? Pinterest. Oh my God, God. Pinterest got in the game. They were the clean one. So you know, disappointed. Yeah, I think we should be sponsored by Pinterest. FT settlement, they paid $7.8 million. That's it. It's like, I mean, it's a lot of money, but sure. in there. But in their world, probably not. Jesus, Facebook's like, here you go. We'll fucking cover that shit. It's like, oh, that's Mark's dinner. Yeah, bill. class action Last lawsuits, week. public reaction, public concern, sensitive data involved. I mean, that's some real shit. But do you see how this is like, yeah. this is a perfect example of a self looking ice cream cone? Because now you've created all this trauma and upset. And they're like, hey, we're sorry. But you know, we got a solution. This is our new company over here, evenbetterhelp.com, mm. where you can talk to a certified professional yeah. about what's been going on. You can talk to them about us. We're not going to listen in. And then, of course, they listen in. That's the next yeah. scandal. Yeah. Yeah. And then they start to start another company called besthelp.com. Mm. Do you see? It's like they just got to keep going saying, like, we're going to create trauma that you have to talk to a professional yeah. about. Yeah. And we got the solution for you. It's the company store, bro. It reminds me of uh, something about Mary. Yeah. And the guy's got the business idea. It's like the eight minute abs. What was it originally? Eight minute abs, yeah. I think. And he's doing seven minutes. He's like, until someone comes out with six minute abs. He got so mad because he <laughs> can't get a proper workout in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding a dead body. It's yeah. so ridiculous. It was good stuff. You remember the time? Remember actors? They couldn't. Like, they didn't want to go in television if they were in movies because that was, like, killing their career. Right. Now everyone's... Step down. And everyone's in, I don't know what you call it, television. They're in streaming. It's all different now. Yeah. Let's talk about streaming. You know, George Clooney would never have gone into it. Well, he did because he went to ER. He started in ER. God, he did start in ER. Yeah, dude. Started in ER? ER, I believe, was his... Uh, let's was, find out. Yeah. <laughs> let's find this out. Like, you're like, oh, man. Where did George Clooney get his... No, he was in a movie, I'm sure. Start... Let's see. Yep. Clooney started his career in television, gaining wide recognition in his role as Dr. Doug Ross in the NBC medical Jeez. drama ER from 1994 to 1999. He? he was in his 40s, I believe, when he got started. Look at that. I'm just saying, there's still hope for us, bro. God, you could be in still a major, hope. major show. He is 62 years old and he's rocking it. Yeah, he just had a kid. Like, Did just he? had a kid. He just had a baby a couple years ago. Good for him. We need more Cloonies in this world. Yeah. You know what we don't need more of? Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. 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 <laughs> 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 oh yeah 
You know, it was interesting hearing. I heard Clooney on Smartless, the podcast. Um, yeah. Great guy. Sounds good. Enjoy it. They yeah. Hang out. You know, good looking dude. Definitely. I mean, Clooney had the hair. He had a signature branded hair. a strong haircut. look, whatever it was. But he, uh, he had broken English talking, just fumbling over words. And you just think like, man, actors can deliver a line. And then you yeah. hear someone just having a, like a conversation. You're like, yeah. spit it out, George. I mean, you know. So it just made me feel better to say, you know, you, know, you just don't speak perfect because you go watch a show or a movie. It's very yeah. rare that they write in the improper English. I like it when they actually include it and yeah. someone can act out what it would really feel like to yeah. talk like normal people talk in a show. Well, maybe. Oh, wait, wait, you are you talking about? I don't know. Why does George... <laughs> this doesn't work for you. This is my Clooney job. <laughs> have such... Yeah, this is bad dork. grammar. <laughs> oh, this could go anywhere. Oh, well, people ask. I gotta love the people ask. That's a good insight into what's going on in society. People ask, does George Clooney really have Bell's palsy? He had it as a teenager. What is that? I mean, I've heard of Bell's it, but what is it? What is it? This is a crass way of it, because I've known, I've had clients, it's like a sudden onset of like, oh, you know, using yeah, the face, yeah, like half right. of it starts to droop, okay. kind of, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. comes out of nowhere. It's like, boop. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, yep. I think it's been equated to like a small stroke oh. that causes that problem. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fixable. Is Bill's posse? <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It so, doesn't work for you. What, research? I don't know. You're writing some fiction. I actually have been thinking about writing some fiction. Did I, I tell you about this? You did. Sorry, I don't want to spoil it. No, you don't have to. You like fiction, though. Do you read fiction? You know, I used to read fiction when I read <laughs> the days I read. I don't know. I'm super critical of science fiction. Why? You want it to be like make more well, sense? I'm a futurist, right? So, you know. Fuck's that mean? It's just it like that's that your I'm, statement for everything. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of like, well, I'm a futurist, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a life insurance agent, dude. Like, so. <laughs> I'm a life insurance agent. So you should definitely trust me when I give you sports statistics. Yeah. I stayed at Holiday Inn last night, kind of shit. Right? Yeah. Good marketing. Look at that. You're yeah. definitely an NPC. Ooh, You've we been... can get Holiday Inn to sponsor us. I doubt it. I doubt it. We can record all our episodes in a Holiday Inn. That'd be weird. While they're eating breakfast downstairs, the free and kids crying in the background. I would love it. Yeah. Regular yeah. Joe's. Why it's just regular Joe's stay there? I mean, I'm just Where saying. does Zuck stay when he hits the road? Airbnb. Zucks brings a pop-up hotel. He probably stays in the metaverse. Yeah, probably. He doesn't travel. He doesn't leave home. He doesn't. He just throws on the goggles and he's there. Yeah. Which I really appreciate about him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's socially awkward. I mean, obviously, I mean, he's out there talking to people. No, I, I think he's good. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. convinced you with that one thing. Yeah, like, yeah. He's no, good. no, no. He's good. It sucks is fine. Flying his own plane, obviously. He's not flying, but he's on his plane. Although... Let's find out. Does Zucks have a pilot's license? <laughs> yeah, he probably does. Yeah. So, does Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. Now we're going to find out, right? Yeah. The ranks of aspiring aviators now include Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. whose interests have lately expanded from cage fighting to flying. My man. Look at that. God. I think we He's are just living in a simulation. so fucking bored. Yeah. He can't just sit around and do nothing, can he? Look at this. It says the uh, father of three obtained a student pilot certificate earlier this year, according to Federal Aviation Administration records. Good for him. Good for yeah. you, Mark. I yeah. know listening. So he flies. Yes. He Fly, lands. Or he's aspiring. Yeah. He you lands know. at his airport. Choice. Goes wherever the fuck he wants. Where does he stay? Do they rent out like the top floor of uh, the Four Seasons or some shit? I don't know, man. Zucks doesn't strike me as like a real flashy dude. He no. still rocks a t-shirt, which I appreciate. But I don't think he just walks down the street. Have you seen the video of Bill Gates back in the day when he's like walking he's in front of a, maybe a courthouse, it looks like, and someone throws a pie in his face? Wow. You haven't seen that no. video? It's so, wow, man. It's not good because it's so stupid. Like, why would someone do that? He was well, terrified. You gotta give some props to pie in the face. Yeah. That's an old school That would be scary as shit, though, if you don't know what's coming and someone just fucking hit you with a pie. Can you imagine today? Like, it's not Somebody hits you with a pie, like, oh my God. Oh, like God, the way that, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, you didn't get shot. You got hit with a pie. Yeah. People are acting out. This is good because the colleges, Yale, Princeton, Harvard, mm -hmm. all these places, they're like, I'm surprised that people are surprised that all that shit went down. This yeah. has been happening. So there's read an article Go back to the colony of the American mind. They reference yeah. an article from 2017. Yeah. There's a child psychologist wrote an article about what's proper to wear. Like, what type of statement are you trying to make on Halloween? Oh, the so Halloween whatever she said, Yeah. And everyone freaked the fuck out. They right. had huge protests at Yale. They basically 
she's like, I'm fucking out. Like, this is so fucking, and then she wrote an op-ed article in the Washington Post, got, you know, and that, it was nuts. And her whole point was, we can't even have a conversation. Yeah. So you want to talk, but you don't want to listen. Right. And she even said, like, I'm wrong in some of my assumptions of what I said, well, sure. but I'm willing to have a conversation listening to what your thoughts are on it. There was a video of that student who was just screaming at her, like, just yelling, just like, you know, like yelling oh, about God. a safe space, and this is supposed to be this. Jeez. I don't want to hear what, you know, you have to say. And just like, just yeah. temper tantrum. That's where we are. Temper tantrum. She needed a pie in the face. Yes. I wonder where she is now. Remember the VH1? Where are they now? They should do a VH1 on all the Ooh. people who lost their shit. Wow. You know, on elite college campuses back in the yeah. 17s. You went viral yeah. 10 years ago. So now today, you know. Harvard, Yale, whatever, does all the shit that they're doing. And everyone's like, I can't believe these universities. No, no, no. This has been going on. This yeah. isn't new. Now, it hit another level because they went, they're in Capitol Hill saying all the shit that they're saying. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. fuck, like these elitist universities. They're getting hammered. They're losing all their money. But it's just been going on. Like, what did they expect yeah. to happen? And it takes on different forms and different topics, depending on what the, uh, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, everyone's affected by it. Like, and I'm not saying people shouldn't have the right to say what they want to say. For sure. It's just like, look, but have discourse, you know. They don't want that. Don't be like, we're going to scream what we want to scream. But if anybody disagrees with us, then that's violence. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't work. And then, so a speaker, let's say a right-wing speaker mm -hmm. is coming onto your college campus. They have people that are stopping them physically oh, yeah. from going to see that person. Yeah. Talk about hypocrite. Which is weird because I'd be like, man, you know, especially if you're a right wing speaker, you'd think they'd bring an entourage because they talk so much shit. Like, yeah. yeah, man. They had to go hide out some of these speakers. Oh, no, I'm just you kidding know? about the yeah. whole entourage thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone's <laughs> taking some shit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I tell you what, as much as I dislike the policies and track record and just kind of the, you know, the zone of Gavin Newsom. I do think he'd throw down. Yeah. I think he would physically, like, like if somebody tried to get up on his shit, he'd knock him out. Yeah. And I wouldn't vote for him. Yeah. You know, and I'm not like trying to lift him up, but he kind of strikes me as a guy who's like, I don't care. I'll fight you. I mm. will. Even if I lose. Okay. Uh, he's not afraid to get his pretty face damaged. Interesting. And I got to respect that even though I don't like him. Okay. Again, I don't like the character, Gavin Newsom. I don't know him as a person. It's old school though, if that's what he's doing. He kind of gives me that vibe. Like, hey man, you know, you want to fight? I'll fight. Yeah. I don't know. I just get that vibe. Yeah. You know, like I could see him and Donald Trump, like Donald would be like, bro, you just punched me in the face. Like you just took this to a whole nother level. And I don't think Donald Trump would swing back because I think at Donald Trump's heart, in his heart, he is a peacemaker. <laughs> he just loves. Yeah. He loves everybody. Yeah. I was looking at the dignity. That's what it is. Dignity. I like that. But victimhood culture. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. So we're talking about like old times. I think that was on this episode. That was just a little while ago. Back in the day, how tough it was, how rough they had it. So if someone insulted, so if I insulted you, uh -huh. we're going to have a duel. So not only are we going to like, we, we can't take it. We're going to physically right, or, we're shoot or at each kill other. each other. Then there was like, you talk about this a lot, like feelings, you take them on and nothing could fucking shake you. Like you would just tuck it way down deep, but you'd figure it out. You're just like yeah. callous the mind, just real tough shit. Nowadays, it's the victimhood culture. Right. So if someone insults you, you immediately feel pain. I never punched you. Right. Never did anything. I didn't hurt you. I didn't hurt your family. I just no. said something about you. And somehow you took that as violence. Right. It's fucking very different than getting punched in the face. For sure. But that changed. So at one point, they're killing each other. That's probably not the answer. Then they were like, now, yeah, because mental health is a big deal and you want to work on your feelings, but how far do you take it to the point where like everything's an insult? Because if, if you yeah. turn on the TV, if you listen to our podcast, I'm sure people are insulted by some of the shit that you say. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Definitely. I mean, I, I mean, But what are you going to do? Like, are you really going to like shut it down for the day and be like, fuck, everyone's after me. What a waste of time. Yeah. So that's the victimhood culture that oh, we're we in right now. Oh, we get comments and we're always thankful for them yeah. that are obnoxious and, yeah. the, you know, various and they problems. And what's so funny is they insult us back by doing it, which is great, I which know. means they're listening. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, you can so good. call us morons, yeah. whatever you want. It's like, there's nothing you can say that we haven't yeah. said about ourselves, guy. Yeah. You know? That's it. We have low self-esteem. Mm. We tear ourselves down. Yeah. And you should see how we talk about ourselves when the mics aren't on, because it's bad. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. When I'm by myself in my office, like I just say things out loud sometimes, Eric, yeah. that are just awful to myself. Mm. Like, ugh. Fragile. 
Well, no, I, I kind of look at that as a way of building up resilience. Okay. Because there's nothing anybody can say to me that I have not already said to myself. I like that. Even if I have, you know, good self-esteem. That's like Eminem style? It's a great like question. Mile. Don't know. Maybe. Which my kids are, you know, they're like really idolizing Eminem. I'm like, check it out. He's not for kids. Yeah. He's gotten super political too now, so that's fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, man, I'll <laughs> tell you what. Look, that's a great, you know, talk about perception management, right? When, and you can actually go back and find a date on this, but just the idea that politics and politicians are celebrities so fucked up. Like, these are the worst celebrities in the yeah. world. Yeah. They just are. Everybody wants 15 minutes, get on the mic, do something crazy. We're, I mean, we're obsessed with, oh, it's just sad. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this here. But at the end of the day, the presidential election does not matter. Mm. It does very little to actually change your day-to-day reality. But that's the one that everybody votes in. Yeah, that's the big one. It affects mindset, though. Right. But that's part of the story. Like, you've just been suckered into believing that this is more important than it is. Let's make, yeah, every episode we do. Yeah. Let's take a temperature. Who's going to win the election? 2020, what is it? 2024? I still don't know who the contenders are. Trump is almost certainly. No, you can change it. No, no, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's going to win? Like, it could be. DeSantis comes out of nowhere. No, he's he's not already, going, he jumped no. out. Yeah. Gavin Newsom could be your winner. But you can change it. So this Ooh. answer, who's going to win the election in 2024? And we give an answer and then... Man, if it's Trump and Biden, my gut tells me it's going to be Trump. I think so too. I right just now. don't think... I don't even think Biden would have beat Trump had it not been for COVID. I really mm-hmm. don't. Like yeah. if he had to get up there and debate. I mean, just because imagine there I mean, are going to be presidential debate. debates. Yeah. Biden can barely get a sentence out. I mean, yeah. I sent you that really sad, you know, that ah, promo of geez. fundraiser of Obama and Biden and Obama's doing most that of the was talking. Real. That's a real thing. Like they put that out there. It yes. wasn't like a SNL skit. No. And all you can <laughs> yeah. think is like Obama's yeah. sitting there going, I should have never forced this guy to the front of the ticket. You know, like yeah. that's. Yeah. But he made his bed. I think so too. So what happens in that scenario to our country? Because to your point, yeah. maybe it doesn't affect your day-to-day. Like you're sitting here. It's not like, right. what does it do? Like, I don't know if people are going to be happy. No, I mean, and again, but this is also part of the machine, right? Is that we're sitting here talking about this because pundits are out there and they're telling us they've done these polls and these surveys Ugh. and both sides. And they're like, neither will accept, you know, this percentage won't accept the outcome of the election. So what they're doing is they're building up this tension, this drama, yeah. what's going to happen next. Yeah. It's the same format as putting together a TV series. You build and build and build, create intrigue, create mystery, uh, create anxiety. And then, you know, we get a little bit of resolve, but not a hundred percent resolve because we got to know what's going to happen in season two. We got to get excited about season two. So you buy in. Yeah. So that you're anxiously awaiting for the next year when uh, that new season comes out. Because holy shit, there's so many unresolved issues. Uh, that's good. That's what it is. That's what politics is. So don't be a sucker. Like understand if you're going to follow it, just go, yeah, you know, the world is burning. The world is burning. And then, you know, the day after the elections, you know, and the winner is called, it's like, okay, here we go. I guess we're, yeah. you know. But chances are we fight it for six months afterwards or probably they're still debating who won the last election. That's still going Who's on. Who's debating that? No, it's just I mean, media. Yeah. There's always conversations. It's so, no, I get it. Yeah. Trump's calling shit out. It's a waste of time. Yeah. I mean, I would say the expectations that people should have should be pretty much zero or yeah. little or the opposite of what they want to happen. Like sure. expect if you want Trump to win, you should probably think Biden's going to win and get ready for that shit and vice versa. Because yeah, maybe. like if you're a Browns fan, you just fucking expect the other team's going to beat you. Like when I went to the Bills game, the uh-huh. lose to the Chiefs. Yeah. In my mind. Wait, you went to that game? No, no, no. Oh, okay. The Bills went into the game. I was here. Got you. Girls. Was say. Yeah. We were watching Ted Lasso during it. It's mm. good. And, and the Bills. I love that show. We should talk about that too. Yeah, we should. That's another episode maybe. So but anyway, like my expectations were I thought they were going to lose. Right. I wasn't upset about it. I don't trust the coach. I nope. think he's never proven. Why should I believe otherwise that he's going to now somehow come yeah. through and beat the Chiefs or win a playoff game, which he hasn't done. He's never beaten the Chiefs in the playoffs yeah. with Patrick Mahomes as quarterback. And it's like, oh, they're in Buffalo this time. I get it. They have a lot of injuries, whatever. I just didn't think they were going to win. So yeah. My expectations were pretty low or none or actually the opposite. And so when they lose, you're not the guy that's yelling at the wide receiver for the Bills who's injured, who's not playing, say, you fucking suck, you can't run around. You're like, watching these people, you're like, man, that guy had high expectations. Yep. And then he started taking it out on NFL players. And I guarantee right. if he saw that fucking guy in the street, he would never say that shit to him on his face. But it's like, not. that's the world we live in, where like, you feel like you can yell from Twitter, or if you're in a crowd and there's hundreds of people between you and him, there's nothing that's gonna happen. Right. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, expectations are so high that it's gonna be this guy, my candidate's gonna be winner and it's like man that's tough to have well i think it's a combination of 
expectations being too high, and then also a deep lack of personal and, you know, collective meaning and purpose. Yeah. We're trying to put those things into other stuff because as much good as, you know, technology has helped to create, it's created just as much turmoil, if not more, because, you know, it's like the Wild West. There's no real, like, these are the bounds. This is what this is used for, you know. And again, like, this is always tricky for me because I'm not a fan of, you know, more regulations, more regulatory power of the government. And that's not, you know, I'm not a Republican. I'm, I spent plenty of time in Washington lobbying on behalf of small, medium-sized companies. And you learn real fast. It doesn't take but a few times doing it where you go, oh, mm. oh, okay. So now I have a better understanding of what the regulatory system is. And for anybody that doesn't actually know, because the narrative, again, stories, is always, well, if you're against regulation, you must be a Republican. And yeah. You hate the environment mm. and you don't believe in safety and unmitigated capitalism. And if you are for, for regulation, you're a good person and you're probably a Democrat and you believe in safety and a just society and all this kind of, th these are the, the blanket stories and ideas. Yeah. That's not necessarily true. If you understand how the regulatory system works, it all comes down to incentives. Regulators are incentivized to create more rules to enforce the executive regulation. So if the president, you know, if a bill is passed and here's the new regulation on an industry or whatever it might be, then the regulatory bodies under that that are there to enforce it are incentivized to create more rules year to year to show that they're enforcing it. This is where, why so many businesses, especially small businesses, are like wrapping up 80, you know, again, I'm going to exaggerate here, but a ridiculous amount of time and money spent on coming into compliance oftentimes for shit that they don't even sell or have in their, you know, but it's like they have to be in general compliance of everything else. And regulators are, it's mm. just a fucking shit show. So I'm not a fan of that. But there is something that needs to be in place to help us better define the parameters and the purpose of social media and all the technology because it is accelerating at such a rate. Yeah. That if we don't get our hands on that, and again, this also, you know, ties into why I do believe that uh, there should, just like there's an age limit, before you can actually run and be elected for president, there should be an age limit for when you have to get the fuck out. Yeah. Because you have plenty of people that are, you know, over the age of 70. Look it up while I'm just rambling here. Yeah. How many people over the age of 70 are sitting congressmen and women? Okay. Right? Plenty of people there. It's like they're passing rules and creating structures and regulations and everything else that they're probably not even going to be around to feel the impact of. I'm not saying they're going to die in the next year. I'm just saying, like, you know, a lot of them are falling off. Yeah. Joe Biden barely can walk. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we're going to run him again. I'm like, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him if he isn't dead before like the next presidential. And I'm not saying that to be callous. I get it. He just looks frail. This is a part of life. Diane Feinstein getting rolled in on a wheelchair with an eye patch on because of all that. And then she dies. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like these are actual people. No matter what you think about them, it's like, let them die with dignity. Yeah. You know, so how many people over the age of 70 are sitting in Congress, men and women? Oh, man, over the age of 70, average age yeah, is 64. The, okay, that's all we need to know. Yeah, that's the Average nuts. age of our elected representatives yeah. is, is 64. Yeah. That's a problem, right? So they're the ones who are trying to pass laws and work around this thing so we can better understand the technology and utilize it in a way that's productive and not destructive. The baby boomers and silent generation together make up over 50% of the members of Congress. Oh, that's fucking believable. And that is who's helping to create, you know, rules around AI, technology, social media, all this stuff. That's crazy. What a joke. If I was in the tech world, you know, if I was a, you know, the CEO of a tech company, I would just love this. Yeah. There are over 80. Kay Granger, Virginia Fox, Rosa DeLauro. Virginia Fox, Boone, North Carolina. Jeez. <laughs> over 80 years old. That's wild. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's sad. Bernie Sanders, 81. Mitch McConnell, 80. Diane Feinstein, 89. Dude, she's dead. Well, I mean. She was 89, she, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Okay, yeah. She passed away. Right, but I'm saying. Right, she was 89. Okay. That's ridiculous. Joe Biden is how old? How old isn't he like 80? 80. Oh, Diane. We celebrate his birthday? Biden day? Yeah. Some people do, I'm sure. September 29th, 2023. Weird. So he's how old? So ChatGPT didn't get the notice that Diane passed. That's terrible. That just shows you ChatGPT can't be trusted. I have to read the text of exactly how they said it. Oh, no. no. They use the word R, not was. R? R, A-R-E. ChatGPT. Yeah. It's using old data, bro. Yeah. So what do you want to know? It's a one-man job, buddy. Yeah. It's a one-man job. I know. My bad. That's okay. 
I know. You like your new toy. I do. I just yeah. feel, it makes me feel smarter. Yeah. Slower, but smarter. 81. Yeah. Obama's 62. Like, that's a normal age. Yeah. That's a good age. He looks like he's 80. Trump's not that young. He's 77. Right. But Trump is probably the only president he who was younger. a president who, who did he's not young. age a decade. Yeah. Obama aged a decade. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he was in there for eight years. So, yes, yeah. so let's say two decades. Yeah. Jill's 72. Jill? What's the first lady? When did they become president? If like all the people... They don't. They are not elected. They're not in the line of succession. Yeah. I guess we could look it up to confirm there was that. Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah. Kiefer said, and the whole thing blew up, and he was like, what was he, like 17th on the list? I don't know yeah, what it was. Yeah, he was like somebody over some federal <laughs> Lone, agency. What was his name? Or what was the... I didn't see that. I just saw... 24. No. No, no, that wasn't 24. Lone Survivor. Lone no, Survivor. that was uh, the Navy Seal movie based on the book. Damn. Yeah. Oh, well, on. whatever. I'm not going to look it up. The audience can look it up. His age of 81 is an asset. That's what it says. So who says that? Who do you think? Oh, it's kind of a joke. Trump says that. No. Biden says. Yeah, no. Yeah, Jill. Oh, Jill says. Jill said it. You're right. So they, he said Biden. President Joe Biden's record age, 81, is an asset. First Lady Jill Biden says. Yeah. That's yeah. just, I mean, talk about living in complete and total denial. Yeah. 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 I think it was her. It was on MSNBC this morning, Joe. Oh, my God. What a propaganda <laughs> machine. I say his age is an asset. He has wisdom. He has experience. He can't form a sentence. He does know every <laughs> leader on the world stage. Yeah. He's lived history. Ooh. That's an asset. She's lived it. So stupid. <laughs> like these are just these He knows shallow. history. I think he probably used to know history. Yeah. I forgot a lot about it. It's understandable though. Yeah. Like and normal. he makes up history yeah, on a regular makes, basis yeah. of events that he was, you know, a part of that oftentimes happened prior to his mm. birth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she caught herself too. She said he is the right man. Ooh, I'm sorry. The right person for this job. Shut up. She didn't say. Is it. Joe Biden like questioning his own sexual identity? <laughs> sorry, his own gender identity? Breaking news. Wow. He's yeah. the right, well, I haven't checked with him today. Yeah. I don't know how he's identifying. Yeah. What yeah. was that about? He's yeah. the right man for the job. Yeah. Mm. Oh, she was saying that it could be a woman for the job. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, again, this goes back to the thing, right? Does anybody think when you say he's the right man for the job that you are, you know, passively, aggressively saying that women should not be in leadership or women should not be? She president? said it. That's so stupid to me. But that's the kind of crap that this kind of culture yeah. creates is like, oh, I got to be careful of everything I say because somebody might misconstrue that or take it out of context or say yeah. that I'm saying that yeah. only men can. But again, most people that I know, right, mm. don't think like that. Yeah. But the I know, media right? world, I agree. What's on your phone? What's on your tablet? What's uh, it's out there? They're making you think everybody has these ridiculous fucking ideas and they yeah. don't. Yeah. And that's what gets elevated. It's very rare do you run into somebody and you're like, wow, they're like someone that you just met because most people we talk to you are all making fun of this shit. Of course. No but matter like what the political media makes you, and then they persuasion but is. somehow they still disconnect people in the real world because they create arguments over it and you can't have conversations about it, which we were talking right. about earlier. Yeah. Because you're going to offend somebody. Yeah. I think it's better when like you sit down and your friends are there and everything's on the table. Of course. Yeah. It's just easier that way. And it all comes back to realizing. And I get it. You may be a little bit hateful and this and that, like a little too far. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, but I can go back at you and like have that. And it's like, man, it's just everything's on the table. Yeah. He's fucking old. Can we say it? He is. He's not old as far as an age is concerned. He's old in the way he's acting. So even if he was oh, 52 acting, he's not way, you'd be like, he's not in a good place for this. No. You run the president of America. He can't. American. Form can. Yeah. yeah. I like w. that. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that wild? I mean. How old's W? I don't know, man. He's not that old. Right? That guy's young at heart. Yeah. It's amazing to me too. You know how short term memory, how much of a short term memory we have is. He's 77. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, did you ever think back when George W. Bush was was the president? And I mean, and just how much, like, shit his administration got us into. I mean, he was, you know, labeled as a war criminal and everything else. And Yeah. You know, and again, like, I was not a fan. I mean, I'm not a fan of any politicians, honestly. Jimmy Carter? He's 99. Jimmy C. <laughs> Give you some more names. Let's see. Yes. Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush, that's his... She passed. No, I know that. They have an old picture of her. She was always old. Yeah. But young at heart. Yeah. Yeah. Al Gore. <laughs> is he still kicking it? I don't know. I think he is. His picture's crazy. Yeah. But now George Bush is like a folk hero, even to the Democrats and all I these mean, never Trumpers. It's like, did you forget? He was the devil to you guys yeah. way back when. You know? It's just... Kind of, all right, just real quick. I'm just kidding. This is a list that comes through on Google. It's funny. <laughs> George Bush, Bill Clinton. I'm not going to read everybody. Yeah, Barack yeah. Obama, Dick Cheney, Laura Bush, uh -huh. Jeb Bush, Barbara Bush. Yeah, Barbara was the mother. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was Joe George, Biden, Jimmy George Carter, H. Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, 
Gerald Ford, George Washington, Condoleezza Rice, Neil Bush, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what is this? So I'm saying, you just go through this and there he is. What oh, the people fuck? also search for, oh, so these are I all know, people. I know, but it's just like, yeah. one of these is not like the other. Right. <laughs> yeah, people would say like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it'd be Condoleezza Rice. Oh, okay. Because she is extraterrestrial. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I don't know. She's non-human intelligence. She's at an elevated place. I mean, like when you sit and watch her, you're like, she's not from this planet. Uh -huh. She has wisdom and knowledge that we are unaware of. Uh -huh. She is a plant by some yeah. higher level species. Okay. And she's doing an amazing job of undermining our entire world order. And she is going to be hailed in the annals of some other off-planet species mm. as... A folk hero. Yeah, that's crazy. For what she did to planet Earth. Okay, so there's a movie or a movie. I mean, Shit. I am script writing in the moment. Okay, no, here. I did, but you just described a movie. And it's going to be I'm very, sorry. Yeah. You described a book. Right. I keep saying the word movie because we were talking about movies earlier. Matt Haig wrote a book called The Humans. Mm. So he came here to take care because the humans were getting too smart with math. Ooh. So he had to go and figure it out. And so he took the body of a mathematician. Mm. And so he became the husband of his wife. Oh, did he start fucking up equations? No, he just had to, he, his job was to find out who it is, kill anyone associated with it, and go back to his place. Dang. Because the Americans didn't know anything about, but he was a human. No one knew anything different. He just acted weird because he was like not human. He's on spectrum. So he was kind of your point. Like you watch him like, man, that's, is everything all right with you? You've been yeah. acting different lately. Kind of shit. It's called The Humans. It's a great book. It's more about relationships and yeah, all that kind of stuff. See, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. But here's why this would be a great show. Would be a great book first. And then somebody have to buy the rights to oh, the yeah. show. I yeah. mean, we'll write yeah. together yeah. if you're in it. You're going to create this thing like Condoleezza Rice, right? Mm -hmm. Like she already kind of had this, this ethos around her being like, you know, she's one of the people who's been chased off of college campuses or people protesting her. You know, she was part of the neoconservative, that clan, you know, in the Bush administration, warmongering, empire building. Right? These, are the, these are the overarching narratives here. Yeah. All right. Wickedly smart. Yeah. Served on the board of directors for the Rand Corporation. You know, well-known, one of the earliest, oldest think tanks. People say it's a neoconservative think tank. That's not necessarily true. All that is said. So, you know, you're building up all these things and, and, and trying to understand, like, what's going on here. You know, you feel like you're supposed to hate her, but she's got a great personality. This is what's going to go in the book. Mm -hmm. She's got a great personality because she's been trained by this off-world, off-planet species, which she is a part of. Oh. Maybe she's a hybrid. I don't know. Those are the nuanced details we'll have to get into. And the audience is left, you know, the reader is left. Mm -hmm struggling, internally struggling because they want to hate her. Mm. They want to hate this person who's undermining the, the global order, no matter how chaotic it is, who's undermining what it means to be human. But at the same time, Condoleezza Rice has all these human traits that the reader just relates to at a level they've never even thought about. So they want to hate her. They can't hate her. And they're left in limbo. And they're left thinking, I hate myself. Because I hate Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> and that's a problem. Yeah. And now, we can control the population. Bunch of self-hating humans. Mm. I'm just spitballing here, that's bro. It. it just goes to show what a great off-the-cuff writer that's I am. a science fiction novel, right? That's a psychological thriller. Oof. Mixed with a, it's like like a psychological sci thriller and a science fiction novel got together. Political. And they, you know, did stuff. Parts. They did stuff, yeah. And then this... Yeah. Wonderful piece. I think it's what this podcast should just become is we're just spitballing ideas, Ooh. movie ideas. Fuck. We got to copyright all of them, though. Which, by the way, they are copyrighted immediately. I we like have that. to submit. Spitballing. That's good. I sure hope people are still listening. I saw a podcast, the name of it. You know, it's a cool name. What? Dope shit. That's great. That's a fucking good Just tells name. you what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And they got a little, they had good audio with it. Like, uh, that's the key. Yeah, that's good. But kind of leaves a rice. You know what her claim to fame is? What? She was on the college football playoff committee. That's, she's the one that selected what team made the playoff. Oh, I do remember they, hearing yeah. that. That's not yeah. her claim to fame, though. No, she's got a hell of a resume. I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm not saying this I'm is saviors in the metaverse. I'm just right. saying, like, her claim to fame was she was on the college football playoff. Yeah. Let's make that a thing. Okay. But it was, she was. It right. was a fact. Ooh, not a, I think. Let's say this. At oh, least in this. Oh, oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is good for the book. Okay. Because she's on the board. She's on the committee for the college football playoffs, <laughs> which a lot of people have a lot of feelings about. Yeah. But this is the moment where her identity starts to crack a bit. Her identity is an off-world species, as a member of this off-world species, as a covert asset. Mm. Maybe even she doesn't know she's from another planet. Yeah. 
And this is like, somehow this gets triggered. It's like how Lance Armstrong got discovered that he was doping. It was through some amateur cyclist who was connected to somebody else who was providing. There's like this whole crazy thing where... Mm. He didn't know. Yeah, no, it was just various dots. It unraveled in a way that was completely stupid. <sighs> like it sh shouldn't happen. Yeah. And then he got, you know, everything came crumbling down. We have to have something like that. Mm. Gotta have a twist in there like that. Yeah. The fact that she was on the college board or on the board of yeah. college football, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, doesn't matter. That's the spot. Yeah. That's the spot. At the same time, we're educating people about how fucked up and crazy that process is. Yeah. I'm just saying, man, this is going to yeah. have so many layers. It touches so, so many good. parts of our society. Yeah. And of our, not just our external space, yeah, but our internal space. Remember the whole, yeah. I hate myself because I'm yeah. trying to hate Condoleezza Rice. It was yeah. an off-world, you know, covert asset. Yeah. I'm just saying. Is this the prequel to World so War Three? No. World War Three is not allowed to happen. Why? I don't know. It just came to me. Maybe it came to me from some non-human intelligence. Yeah, maybe you're not human, right? Like that There's be. always possibility. Maybe and what I'm trying to it. say is I'm trying to share something with you about myself that I yeah. think might not be true. Yeah. And I'm doing it in such a way that gives me cover. Mm. Chew on that one. Yeah. Chew on that one. Yeah, that's a weekend. This podcast is going to another level. Yeah. 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 Those mushrooms kicking in for you? Yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like in the last <laughs> movie idea. Oh, man. Yeah. That's so good for the brain. It's so good. It is. What yeah. are we doing? I we should just know. write stories. Yeah. We are writing stories. We're writing short stories. Yeah. That's going to be the new podcast. Yeah. You know why? Because nobody cares. Like, what people want is to be entertained. They want something totally different. Totally different. Yeah. I think we've just figured out what Sages the Metaverse is going to do. You have to get outrageous. Oh, for sure. Which we're good at. Yeah. But keeping it within the bounds of sanity. Like, fuck the norms. Well, yeah. The standard. And no, we're not changing the name. Of the Metaverse. Savers of the podcast. Yeah. Like Metaverse saying, can still be the thing. Oh, sure. Why not? Yeah. Even though we don't talk about the Metaverse. It doesn't matter. A little bit. It comes up. Yeah. But that's more of an obligatory mention because of the title of the show. Just saying. Yeah. It's all good though. Well, I mean, you and Zucks have a, have a thing. We got a history. Talk about, we don't yeah. talk about it. I signed yeah. a non-disclosure agreement. So, yeah. so yeah. there's very little I can say about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know. good stuff, dude. It's great. Look at this. If we go and stop in two seconds, this is going to be 60 minutes. I love you. Let's cut it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.